Hey, welcome back. We're going to create some forms now in our application that we're using with Firebase. And so in this process, we're going to do mostly HTML coding. We're going to copy from Bootstrap and create something that looks like what you have on the screen here. At the top of the form, we're going to have a login area. And then here at the bottom, we're going to show an add hero form. So let me log in here and then that form will become visible. Okay, so now I'm logged in. You notice the top form is invisible but the bottom form that says create new hero is now visible. Let's start by going to the Bootstrap website. So getbootstrap.com and I'm going to use version 3.37. We're going to then look at their CSS area and we're going to have some copy and paste code that we can just borrow. So over on the right side there's an index where I'm going to select forms and this form here is very similar to what I want to use for my login so I'm going to copy this code and then edit it okay so back here in my code I'm going to erase this original ready to go message and control V for paste and now I have my login form okay let's save this and see what happens so I save my work go back and refresh our page and you can see that we have a page up here that has a login form. If we want to make our website responsive so it looks good on any size screen we need to use what's called containers. So I'm going to create a div and then I'm going to provide a class name called container on that div. So class equals container. Save it and refresh the page. So that's part of the advantage of Bootstrap is that I can use any size screen and containers automatically are flexible. Now let's change the field name so that they actually look like our login form. First of all we're going to change some of these um, features here. I'm going to give this thing an ID which will be important later. We're going to use this for our actual programming so you have to have a unique identifier for certain things like buttons that you click on and forms that you work with. So let's change some of these labels. So instead of example input email one, let's give this thing our own name. Let's call it input email. So let's also change the ID on the actual input item. So we're going to call it input email as well. So on the next item, let's change this ID to call it input password and let's also say that the label matches the ID so input password is what we're looking for now the other items we're not going to need right now so we have a file uploader uh, we can delete that there's a checkbox and let's delete that so I'm gonna select all of those and press delete so on this last item down here I'm going to change this from a submit button to just the class button or the type button and we need to give this thing an ID so we can catch its uh, actions later in programming. So we're going to call this thing sign in button. And let's rename the title there as sign in. Okay, I'm going to save the changes and take a look at how the page turned out. Let's refresh this page. Now we have an email and a password and sign in. Let's add a few more things. I'd like to have the color of the sign-in form like in a rectangle around it. And in a Bootstrap, that's called a well. And I'm going to change the sign-in button to be blue. So in this class container, uh, we're going to also put in a div. And we're going to just say that is a class of a well. So that is a predefined class that is in Bootstrap. And you'll see what it does in just a second here. So save and let's reload. And so you can see it has this light gray rectangle. It kind of keeps things together in a logical group. Now for the button, if we want to just change the uh, button color, we can change the class. So right now it says button default. And uh, let's see, if we go back to uh, Bootstrap and let's go look at buttons and see what the options are. So we have defaults and the colors are right here. So it looks like primary, success, info, warning, and danger are our options. So if I want a blue button, I want to use what's called primary. So this is the class name, BTN primary, that I'm going to need. So let's just copy that and bring it back into here. And instead of button defaults, 
we're going to use button primary. Okay, so now back to my web page, refresh, and the button turns blue. Now let's take a look at another option for buttons on our bootstrap idea. Let's scroll down a little bit more until we come to something called a block level button. So it says here, this is for full span of their parent. Use the class btn block. So let's experiment with that. Let's take another class and type it in, btn block. Save it and let's refresh our original page. And you can see that the button now is a block level button. It fills up the whole page. So if you prefer that, you can use that. Now in the original page that I showed you, we're going to use a create new account button and also log in with Google button. And so those are gonna be three different actions that we can use depending on what the person wants to log in with. So I'm just gonna add two more buttons and change the one to a yellow color. So if I want to use the existing code, I can select and copy and paste two more. So I'm gonna rename this one here as uh, create new user. Create new user is all one word. And let's see, we better change the text on the button that says create new account. And let's see, we're gonna change the color from primary and I want the color to be the, um, the orange color in this case, which is a warning. So that was listed right here, BTN warning. And the other was the uh, sign in with Google option. So the last button that I'm going to put in is I'm going to give it a name of Google uh, login button. And so these IDs will become important in the next few videos when we create the actual code behind the button. So let's see, primary is fine and I'm going to use the uh, text in here, sign in with Google. All right, so let's uh, check it out. Let's save the work and let's um, refresh our page. Okay, so we've got ourselves the uh, login form at the top. Doesn't seem to do much yet, but we'll create those actions in a few minutes. Okay, let's take a pause on the video now. We've got a form on the screen. The next video we're gonna do is the uh, add hero form at the bottom of the screen.